In March of 2017, iOS was updated to iOS 10.3. This brought with it the usual minor changes and enhancements, but also a fairly significant change in the Settings app. Again, only those that have updated to iOS 10.3 and later will see this change. If we go into the Settings app, here at the top we have an Apple ID profile that includes my name and what I'm signed into. Tap and again my name is displayed along with the email my Apple ID is registered with. Tap here and we can add a photo to the profile. This provides a nice centralized place that stores a lot of information about your Apple ID, iCloud, and App Store accounts. In the Name, Phone Numbers, and Email section, I can edit the email addresses that I'm reachable at. iMessage and FaceTime not only use your phone number, but also email addresses associated with your Apple ID. The MacU at me.com and iCloud.com are essentially the same address. Me.com and iCloud.com are interchangeable. So I can't remove these because they're the main address associated with my Apple ID. But I could remove the Swanson Digital at gmail.com email address. Or I could add a different address or phone number. You'll notice that I don't have a phone number associated with these devices because I only use them for doing these tutorials. This iPhone isn't activated on a cell network. On your phone and iPad, you'll probably have a phone number listed here too. And on other devices, you can add that number to tie those devices in to your Apple ID and iCloud account. If you or a family member or maybe a coworker are getting messages or calls that are meant for someone else, or you just don't want, check in here to see if you might have that family member's email address also associated with your Apple ID. Below, we can turn off or on what email announcements that we get from Apple. In the Password and Security section, we can change the Apple ID password. If you have two-step verification activated, which I do recommend, you'll need to verify your identity on a second device to do this. In the Payment and Shipping section, we can add or edit the payment method that's used for iTunes, the App Store, iCloud, and Apple.com. If you move, you can also change your shipping address here. In this middle section, we have settings for iCloud and the iTunes and App Store. Oddly, the iTunes and App Store settings section is also still available out in the main settings list but iCloud settings are now only available here in the Apple ID Profile section. We also now have a nice color-coded bar graph of our iCloud storage usage. Tap on this to manage or buy more iCloud storage. At the bottom of the Apple ID Profile screen, we can manage all the devices associated with the Apple ID that we're signed in with. So I have an iPhone, iPad, and three Macs registered here. But I actually don't own this iMac anymore. So from here, I can go in and remove it from my account. Notice that I can also quickly see what operating system this Mac is running and even its serial number. So this is nice to have around as a quick way to view all your devices and what they're running. Finally, you can sign out of your account here at the bottom. You'll probably only want to do this if you're selling or changing ownership of the device. As you sign out, you can choose to keep certain data on the device. If you're changing ownership though, you probably don't want to keep a copy of anything on this device. So after updating to iOS 10.3, take a look at and familiarize yourself with the new Apple ID profile in the Settings app.